Okay, so today I'm going to do a bit of a science experiment. Well, you know I did the video the other day of the caustic soda, the lye, the sodium hydroxide, uh, demonstrating how well it, how good it is at burning, you know, crap off of stuff. Well, I came up with the idea that I'm going to do some stress tests with the really cheap surplus gas masks um, to see how well they can survive pH 14 or something very close to pH 14 um, for it in sort of prolonged period, sort of to give you an idea of how well the rubber seals last, the straps and things like that. Um, so while I'm waiting for my first mask to arrive, because obviously I'm not going to do it with my own collection, I'm going to buy extras of any of the masks and then test them. Um, I thought I'd show you what actually happens to certain material when exposed to sodium hydroxide. So here we've got a coffee tub, like an empty jar I finished it off earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a load of boiling water in it. So I've just literally boiled the kettle, so this water is going to be at least 90 degrees. So we'll pour that in there. And we'll add the lye in a minute. So I'll leave the water to about that level. I won't do it completely to the top. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of ingredients. So what I have here is a bit of turkey on um, some foil. Let's chuck the turkey in. Oh, bear in mind I've not added the lye yet, so nothing should really happen. Um, a grape. Um, a foil packet from some of my medication and a bit of foil which I assume is aluminium from a Twix sort of thing. So let's stick those in there. Now, nothing should happen to them at the moment because they're just being exposed to warm water. However, when I add the caustic soda, what should then happen is, um, you know, we should get a bit of a reaction. So I'm going to pour some of this in. There we go. I'm going to put the lid on. As you can hear, that's pretty interesting. Um, and then I'm going to do a bit of a time lapse to see um, what happens next. So, basically, I'm expecting when all the solution mixes together that the grape and the turkey are just going to completely dissolve. Now, because the foil is aluminium, I'm expecting that as well to, or aluminium if you're American. Um, now, this to, just to point out as well, this is really hot to touch this glass, um, because obviously the chemical reaction is taking place, so it's not only like 80 degrees or whatever from the boiling water, it's now probably gone up to closer to 200 degrees. So I might get um, a little metal stand to put this on, so I'll cut back in a second. Alright, so hopefully you can see I've now got that on a little wire rack, so if it gets really hot it shouldn't burn the surface. So let's zoom in and see if anything's happening yet to the grape and the turkey, and it looks like it is. Um, let's just give that a little wobble to um, see if we can get it to stir in a bit more. Bear in mind I didn't add much caustic soda to this at all, because obviously as soon as I heard the reaction taking place, um, I put the lid back on. So. Yeah, that already doesn't look like a regular grape anymore. Um, it looks more like a pickle, to be honest. And the turkey, I don't know if much has happened with that yet, but we will see. Um, this camera isn't very good for doing time lapses because of how its battery works. So um, I might have to just sort of cut the video and cut back sort of in 20 minutes time and then just keep coming back. I couldn't get the labels off properly, otherwise I'd have taken all those off. But let's have a look at the other side of it. So you can see the sachet and the Twix wrapper is still there, not much has happened with those. Although the water now is going green, because obviously what's happening is where that grape is dissolving at the bottom, I don't know how obvious this is um, in the camcorder, but it's very obvious to my eye, there's actually like a distinctly green hue to the bottom of the water. Um, let's just twist that around again. Yep, you can see some stuff coming off of the turkey and the grape now. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. It's just shriveling up that um, grape. Now, interestingly, the aluminium should react and melt down and create um, hydrogen gas. Um, and obviously, the turkey and the grape should just basically melt into um, sludge, um, like what happens to sort of humans and whatever else if they're exposed to uh, caustic soda, sodium hydroxide. Um, apparently they're now using this as a green method of a funeral. I don't know if I particularly want this, but rather than cremation or um, burial, 
what they actually do is basically just fill you in a container, like a pressurised container with sodium hydroxide or NaOH. Um, and then, you know, nothing's left of you but your bones, which are then very easy to sort of just crush up. So it's gone from being sort of a mafia way of disposing of a body to apparently people are very worried about the environment having a clean way of having your body got rid of. Um, so anyway, as said, uh, what I'll just do first actually is get my gloves on, just so I can handle it being very hot. Um, and then I'm just going to give that a bit of a shake and make sure I get the lid done up tight for obvious reasons. Because uh, these butyl glove, uh, gloves should um, you know, give me good hand insulation from the heat of this. So let's just check. Let's get this on tight first of all. This isn't the best kind of coffee jar to be honest to be doing this with because there we go, it's fizzing a bit more. I'm probably here. Let's put that back down again. Um, just because these are the kind of coffee jars where they don't actually um, you know, properly do up in a sense because um, they have obviously a foil wrap when you remove the lid so um, yeah I'll just see if anything more interesting seems to be happening. I'll tell you what, let me take the lid off and just see if that makes a difference just wondering if there'd be any interesting kind of fumes bubbling off the top but doesn't look like there is Anyway, let's just have another quick zoom in on our grape. It's harder to operate the camera again now because I've got gloves on, but let's have a look at that. So as you can probably see, the grape's on the wrong side of the... Um... Can I get that to move? I think the grape's sticking to the bottom a bit now. Let's turn that around. There we go, that's closer to that side. So, yeah, the grape looks quite different at this stage, and the turkey... I can't see a massive difference in it yet, but obviously it could be it has gotten a bit smaller. Um, so what I'm going to do now is cut away for a bit, and we will come back in a little while. Um, I'll time it 20 odd minutes, and then I'll let you see what's happened thus far. I'm going to put the lid back on just to be safe while I'm not in the room. Well, it hasn't been quite 20 minutes yet, but I thought I'd cut back because it's quite interesting. You can now see the entire bottom of the coffee jar looks like an orange colour. And I think that's just where, like, the turkey is literally dissolving in the grape. Oh, you can actually see the turkey is breaking apart now if I do that. Um, I don't know how obvious it is, but you can see little bits of the turkey um, coming off, perhaps. Again, it might be hard to see because of, you know, the camera trying to film through the... Um, actual water but if I do that you might actually see it starting to break apart a bit now it also looks to me on the Twix wrapper I don't know if this is obvious on the camera that something's starting to happen on there where it looks like you know some of the colouring stripping off or whatever all the foil underneath the colourings sort of breaking up because one of the things I have heard with this is sometimes the plasticky kind of paint they put on wrappers doesn't actually dissolve properly even if the wrapper underneath dissolves, which is quite fascinating. If you ever watch people dissolve like Coca-Cola cans and Pepsi cans in life, sometimes the label sort of survives even when everything else turns to sludge. So anyway, I'll leave that a little bit longer now. Let's we'll see if I can get the grape back into a visible position. There it is. And now let's zoom in on that grape again. So as you can see, it's starting to not quite look like um, a grape anymore. It's quite interesting. It's um, yeah, it looks pretty alien now, doesn't it? Because obviously it's starting to melt away. So anyway, I will come back to this in a bit and we will see what else has happened. Now this has been at least half an hour since I last had the camera on. Uh, that's cooled down quite a bit but it's still hot to touch. So you can see the grapes there. Let's zoom in on it. Now you can probably see that that looks very veiny and strange now because obviously a lot of the uh, stuff has come off of it. 
see if I can get that sort of zoomed in and focused. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's still a bit of noise coming off of some of the stuff in there when the water moves around. Okay, so that's the bit of turkey that's left. As you can see, not much is left of it. It's pretty cloudy. Um, bit of noise coming from these bits. Let's turn that that way around again. And what we'll do is I'll take the lid off of this. Yeah, there's not been massive amounts of disintegration to the foil. It's still quite hot to touch, actually. Just wondering if there was any difference at all to... Um, no, I think it's come actually quite a lot more see-through. It's definitely curled up a bit. Yeah, it has gone slightly see-through. So I'm assuming a lot of the aluminium sort of foil underneath the label was actually dissolved and that's just kind of the plasticky label left now. The other packet's not changed much, so it might be that that's not actually aluminium foil. As you can maybe see, that looks pretty intact. Obviously the most interesting thing is the organic material in there. Because, as you can see, there's barely any turkey left at the bottom now. I know there wasn't a massive amount I put in, but you can see some of the sludge of it at the bottom. Anyway, I'm not going to leave that much longer. What I'm going to do now is just pour this into the drain or the bin, whatever the remnants need. Um, but hopefully that's given you an example of what the hydrogen peroxide... Not hydrogen peroxide, peroxide sorry. Sodium hydroxide but the lie, regardless, that's the easiest name to call it, L-Y-E, lie, is done. So what I'm going to do now is pull that away, and then I'm going to cut to that baking tray that I did in the other video, because I left that soaking in lye overnight, and you'll see it looks almost good as new now. So bear with me a second, and we will cut back. Now, that's what's left, so I'm just going to rinse this off and then throw the foil and everything in the bin, but I can't really see any turkey there whatsoever. But with the grape, the skin of that pretty much came straight off. And there's only a little bit left in the actual sort of drain section now. So you'll see this bit of foil is relatively intact. As you can see, this is pretty much just a label now. There's no actual foil to it. So that's quite interesting. So I'm guessing that this wasn't aluminium, that's why that bit didn't dissolve. But you can see in the drain there, that's all that's pretty much left of the turkey and the grape. It's just sort of turned into almost like applesauce. I guess that's the skin of the grapes more than anything else. There we go, I've separated it all into different bits, but yeah, that's all that's left of the grape. If I left that in there longer with more um, sort of lye, I think that would have totally dissolved. Anyway, now for the more interesting bit, let's show you that baking tray and how that's changed. Now actually, before I show you that, this is fascinating. The, there is a bit of turkey left, but it's actually melted and moulded into the same bit as the grape skin. So, you can see there, there's a little red bit from the turkey, uh, like a little blood vessel or something. But yeah, the turkey and the grape have become one, where they basically turned into sludge and fused together, so that's pretty fascinating. I'll throw that in the bin, but I just found that quite interesting. And here we go, there is that same baking tray from before, but as you can see, there's only little bits of residue now in the corners of it. So that gives you an idea of just how strong lye is um, when used in the right circumstances. So what I'm going to do, as said for the next video of lye, is when I've got my gas mask come, is do a series seeing if you know uh, gas masks are exposed to it for about an hour, what sort of thing happens to them. And what I'm expecting will happen is the the bits that are made to be very chemically resistant should withstand the lie quite well, but other bits, if there's weak parts in the mask, might be compromised, so it will give you a good idea of where on some of the very cheap masks failure spots may occur. So stay tuned for that, and um, that shouldn't be too long before I start making videos on that. I'm just waiting for the mask to arrive, and then that series can begin, if it's popular I'll end up buying more cheap surplus masks to do um, pH 14 alkali tests on.